Chapter Three. Wolves. I've just lived through the worst two weeks of my life. I feel a lot better now. That's why I'm speaking again. I didn't want to say anything when there wasn't anything good to say. It rained most of the time. When it wasn't raining, the water was still falling off the leaves of the trees. I was wet, cold, tired, and hungry all the time. I was ill. My head hurt. My stomach hurt. My feet and legs hurt, and I was always getting little cuts on my body. Worst of all, I missed home. I wanted to be back in the village. That's still true. I don't want to be here. Deer are not people. I said I didn't need people, but I think I was wrong. It's hard to. Th Think when you can't talk to anybody. I'm friends with Baby and Brother. I like both of them. Baby is sweet, and Brother is afraid of nothing. The two older deer are afraid of everything. Afraid of birds singing, birds not singing, a cloud going over the sun, a leaf falling. When they're afraid, they jump. They're always jumping. When Mother thinks we're in danger, she pushes me and Baby with her nose. She takes us to dark places in the forest where the trees are crowded together. We move quickly and quietly, in and out of the trees. I'm beginning to feel afraid of everything now. It's stupid. I've not seen anything to be afraid of. I'm getting thin because I don't eat very much. I find a few wild vegetables and a little fruit every day, and I drink mother's milk before I sleep. That's all. These deer eat all the time. They like eating from some trees, not others. Mother has to help baby to get leaves and fruit. She tries to help me too, but deer food is not my food. I can't eat it. Mother is unhappy because I'm not eating well. Poor mother. I'm angry with her all day, but I sleep with her like a baby at night. It's strange. My feelings for mother are very strong. Stronger than my feelings for my real mother, both good and bad feelings. Father doesn't come near us very often. He keeps walking around, up and down. He stands tall and looks through the trees. He puts his nose high up and smells carefully. He gets the best things to eat. And he pushes the rest of the family away if they try to eat near him. I didn't wear clothes for the first week, and that was terrible, because we're in the forest all the time, and I couldn't stop getting cuts. So I made some clothes out of leaves. They're not very good clothes, and I have to keep making new ones. But they stop most of the cuts and also keep me warm. Well, not very warm, but I'm not as cold as before. So, I'm feeling better, a little warmer, a little more food in my stomach, and my body doesn't hurt now. And I'm stronger and quicker, and I can hear and see better too. If you can't talk to anybody, you look, and listen, and smell. Brother and I are always trying to see who can jump higher. I lose most of the time, but I'm getting better. We both enjoy it. There's no rain this morning, which is really wonderful. 
up above, there's only blue sky between the trees. Down here, it's not warm, but it's not cold and wet anymore. Ow! Something happened. Father ran up and knocked me over with his antlers. He wants me to be quiet. Now I'm speaking very softly. All the deer have stopped eating. Only father is moving now, walking very slowly, putting one foot down carefully before moving the next foot. It's very, very quiet. Not a sound anywhere. Why is it so quiet? Why are there no birds singing? Oh, now I can see it. It's an animal coming through the trees. Not quickly, not slowly. It's a wolf. There's only one wolf. Oops! Mother just pushed me because she wants me to move. Now she's pushing baby. The family is moving away, going deeper into the forest. Brother doesn't want to run away, and he's looking at me. Will I run away? No, I'm not going to run. It's stupid. There are four deer and me against just one wolf. We can fight, and the wolf will run away. I'm staying. I've got a big stick and some stones, and I can fight this wolf alone if I have to. Father has gone. Mother's coming back for me. No, she isn't. She stopped. She can't leave baby. Brother's coming to stand with me. Mother and baby have gone. There's only brother, me, and the wolf now. I'm not afraid. Let's see how the wolf likes getting a stone on its nose. Take that. I missed him. I'm good at throwing stones, but the wolf jumped to one side very fast. Now I'm throwing each stone as hard as I can. The wolf's jumping all over the place, but he's not running away. Well, I've still got my stick. Brother can use his feet to fight with. We'll be all right. Oh no! Two more wolves are coming, and they're coming fast. Brother, go, get out of here. That's right. Now I'm alone. There's only one thing to do. I nearly died. I made a very big mistake when I decided to stand and fight. That's what a person does, not a deer. I'm a deer. I smell like a deer, and so wolves think I'm a deer too. I feel bad. I feel small, and unimportant. I'm not a person. I'm just an animal. If another animal is stronger than me, it can kill me. I didn't understand that before. I saved brother. I'm happy about that. The first wolf ran at me, very fast. I suddenly jumped right over him. I'm wonderful at jumping. After two weeks with deer, anybody would be wonderful. The wolf didn't turn very quickly. I looked around for the other two wolves and saw that they weren't coming for me. They were following brother. This was bad. I screamed because I wanted the wolves to think I was afraid. Then they would follow me, not brother. But when I screamed, I knew I really was afraid, 
and the wolves knew it too. That was terrible. All three wolves stopped and ran straight at me. Yes, I was afraid. I dropped the stick and ran like a, like a deer. There was a big tree in front of me, and in seconds, I was at the top of it. And here I am. The wolves sat under my tree for hours with a hungry look in their eyes. They left not long ago, just before it got dark. And this is where I'm staying. I can't find the deer in the dark. I can't lie down with Mother, and drink her milk. I don't think I can sleep in a tree, but I'll try. And I'm sorry, Brother nearly died because of me. Will I see my dear family again? Chapter Four. Killing a wolf. It's morning, and I'm still up in the tree. I didn't sleep all night. I'm hungry, tired, cold, and angry. I'm going to climb down the tree and look for some food. That's better. I can't think when I'm hungry. When I remember how I ran away from those wolves, I feel angry and my face gets hot. Why did I run away? I wasn't afraid. I screamed and ran away to save brother. Of course, that's why. I don't want to go back to the deer family. If I'm not living with deer, I don't have to run away from anything. I can live alone for my year of sharing. I can find food, water, places to sleep. And leaves to make clothes with. I don't need the deer. Life is more difficult with them. I have decided not to follow the deer, and I feel happier now. I won't get lonely or bored. I'm better alone. If a wolf comes, I'll kill it. I can fight wolves if I have sticks and stones. When I find the dead body of an animal, I will cut it up and use it to make something for killing wolves. A catapult, which will shoot stones. I feel much better. Things have changed again. I'm back with the deer. I was sitting on the ground cutting a stick with a stone when I heard Mother calling. She was far away. I only heard her because it was very quiet all around. She was calling. Where are you? Where are you? And I knew she was calling me. It was terrible. I began crying. She's only a deer. I smell like a baby deer to her, but I'm not really. I answered, "I'm here." Mother heard me, and ran to me. She was calling all the time. She came through the trees with baby behind her, and I stood up, still crying. And I, I don't want to talk about it any more. Sometimes, I don't understand myself. I never put my arms round my real mother like that, and mother is only a deer. What could I do? I walked with mother and baby through the forest for a long time, until we found father and brother. Father stopped eating and hit mother with his antlers. He was angry. He wanted her to be near him all the time. When father came up to me, I thought he would hit me too, but he didn't. 
he smelt me carefully, then touched me softly with his head. To him, I'm just a baby. Brother jumped straight up and down. He was so happy to see me again. I was surprised how happy I was to see him, too. In the last few days, we have walked and walked. When the others want to stop and eat, Father keeps us moving. We have swum across rivers, pushed through trees, run across open ground, and moved back into trees again. I know why. We all know. There's a wolf, or wolves, following us. It calls. A long, hungry howling, often at night. It's following our smell. That's why Father tries to go through water as often as possible. Smells are lost in water. I'm busy with my special answer to this danger. I'm making weapons. I break up stones into little pieces. Some pieces of stone are really sharp and will cut like a knife. I've put them on long sticks to make spears. I found a dead animal and cut off its skin. Then I cut the skin into long, thin pieces. Now I have a good catapult. I can kill wolves. Brother's teaching Baby to jump as high as she can. That's his job. Mother teaches Baby about eating and smelling things and cleaning herself. Father doesn't have time to teach Baby. He's always walking round. He's smelling, listening, watching the trees, waiting for something bad to happen. He always knows the best place to go next, because he never stops thinking about it. Brother, baby and I often jump together, moving in sudden, high jumps across the ground. I'm beginning to understand why deer jump so much. A jump catches the eye of a wolf. When a wolf runs after a deer, another deer will jump and the wolf will turn to look at it. Then a third deer will jump. The wolf turns again. Each jump takes the deer away from the wolf and the wolf can't decide which deer to follow. It's clever. Yesterday, something bad happened. Baby did a good, high jump, but when she came down, she gave a little scream. She tried to walk and screamed again, a little, high scream. Mother ran to her, and Father stood not far away and watched. I couldn't see what was wrong at first. Mother didn't want anyone to come near. In the end, I lay down next to Baby and saw what it was. A stick from a tree was deep inside Baby's leg and Mother's teeth couldn't pull it out. Mother didn't let me touch it. Baby could only walk on three legs and she got tired very quickly. Father tried to move on again away from the wolf. But Mother wanted to stay with Baby. Father pushed Mother, and she followed him, but then went back to Baby. Father went back and pushed Mother again. In the end, Father took Baby to a dark place where she could hide under leaves. It was near a river, and the ground was wet. That would hide baby's smell from the wolf. 
Then father pushed us all away. But when we left, we could hear baby calling after us. She didn't understand. Her call said, I'm here, I'm here. Father didn't let mother go back. We walked on. The howl of a wolf came through the trees from far away. I thought of a wolf finding baby. I just couldn't leave her. I stopped. Mother called me, but father was pushing her to go on. I stayed still, and they went into the trees, and I couldn't see them any more. There are no goodbyes with dear. I ran back to baby, and she stopped calling. She was happy. I put my weapons on the ground, my catapult and spears. When I touched baby's leg, she didn't like it. It hurt a lot. She didn't let me touch it again. So... I lay down heavily on top of her. I held the stick in her leg and moved it slowly and carefully. I pulled and turned it until it came out, all of it. Then I went and carried water in my hand from the river to wash the place on her leg. That was all I could do. I brought leaves for baby to eat and water for her to drink. When it got dark, I lay down with her and we slept, keeping warm together. I've just looked at her leg and I think it's getting better. But she can't walk on it yet. We have to stay here for a few days. Then... We will follow the deer family. I think I can find them. I can smell where they have been. I can see where they have walked. And I understand how father thinks. With luck, I can find them. The wolves found us two days later. It was evening, just before dark. Two wolves walked out of the trees and saw me carrying food to baby. They were thin and hungry wolves. I don't think they have eaten for a long time. My weapons were under the leaves with baby. I dropped the food and ran and quickly got a catapult and a few stones. Of course, the wolves thought I was running away and they came to get me. I turned, holding the catapult, and looked at them, and they stopped in surprise. Why wasn't I running away? I felt cold inside, but not afraid. Which one of you shall I kill? I asked them. Which one of you will die First, the wolves heard my cold voice. They knew I was dangerous, but they were hungry. They came slowly, and they didn't make a sound. I shot a stone from the catapult, and it hit one wolf on the eye. The wolf screamed. I followed that with more stones, until a very big one cut its head open. The wolf fell over on its side and didn't move. The other wolf jumped, turned, and ran back into the trees. I looked at the dead wolf on the ground and felt sorry. From the trees came a long, lonely howl. I waited until it was dark, and then Baby and I began walking. Baby walked for a while and then rested. 
I couldn't follow the dear family in the dark because I couldn't see anything, and the smells were cold. But I thought I knew where father would go. There was a moon. I decided we had to walk all night because the other wolf was still out there somewhere. Baby's leg was doing well. I was happy about that. An hour later, we were far from the dark hiding place under the leaves. The wolf wouldn't find us now. There was a howl in the night. Then another howl, and another. Three, four, five, six howls from different sides. The wolves were far away, but there were lots of them. Too many. And so I learnt something new. Wolves have families too, big families. If you kill one wolf, the family wants to find the killer. We were in trouble.